What's up guys? Welcome back to Investing PH. So today we are going to evaluate again another hype stock which is Dito CME Holdings Corporation. We will look at what their business is about and of course how they are doing financially. I would also compare some of its data to their competitors as well. Now without a minute to waste, let's go! First of all, before we start, do like and subscribe to my channel. This way you get to be notified whenever I post future videos about investing and finance. So what is Dito CME Holdings? Originally, it was formerly ISM Communications Corporation, was originally a mining company incorporated in March 1925 under the name Itogon Suyok Mines Incorporated. As ISM, the company was engaged in information technology, multimedia, telecommunications, and other similar industries. On March 6, 2020, the Securities and Exchange Commission approved the change in corporate name to the present one. Now, their company background and business isn't that fully shown in their website because as you can see guys, this is all their website is showing and their website in Dito Telecoms is for their services and ads only. Now, I don't usually use Wikipedia for a background check since this isn't accurate data. But since this is all we've got, let's use it. Ownership of the company are as follows. Udena Corp has 35% stake, Chelsea Logistics Corporation 25%, and China Telecommunication Corp 40%. This is as of 2019. Recent news about Dito was they completed 859 cell sites out of the planned 1,600 sites as of September 2020. So as of 2020, Dito has 2,360 towers compared to PLDT which has 10,079 and Globe with 10,395. With that, I think that's it for the background of this company. Hopefully, they can improve their website for us investors to see more of their data. Now, we will still be following our checklist. If you're new to my channel, then do watch my other stack analysis videos first so that you can understand and follow how I evaluate. With that said, let's check their income statement. We can see their net income isn't doing quite well. Negative for 3 years in a row. A bit of good news was in 2020, which had a positive number. Now this just means in the past years, their cost of operation was more than the company's revenue. This is an X for us. What I want to see here is a steady growth year after year. Now for the company's balance sheet, so their total equity is much better. They had a big growth in 2018, except for 2019 that had a negative year, and a slight growth also in 2020. This isn't too bad, considering 2019 and 2020 was the start of the pandemic. So let's put a check for this since they still came out positive in 2020, despite everything that has happened. Now for their return on equity or ROE, we want this to be 15% above for the 5 year average. So for Dito, this isn't a surprise that they will fail for this valuation since their net income was at a negative for the past years. We can see their ROE in 2020 was only 1.25% since that's the time they had a positive net income. Again. ROE is computed by net income divided by total equity. So this is an X for our list. We will also look at the 5-year average ROE growth of their competitors. For Globe, it's 25.31. And for Tel, it's 17.92. And for Converge, it's 12. This is for year 2020 only since they don't have the 5-year average yet. With this, Dito is really far away in this valuation. For our next valuation, we will look at debt to equity ratio. So this valuation confirms us that their growth in ROE doesn't rely on too much debt. Here they have a really low debt to equity ratio, only 0.007. We can see here they don't have a lot of liabilities, really surprising numbers for their total liabilities. Well, I checked it in MSN, shows this number as well. But when in doubt, look at the annual report. So we can see here it is the same. Well, with that, this is a check for this company. Since what we want here is for this ratio to be less than 2. The ratios of their competitors are, for Globe, it's 3.11, for Tel, 3.98, and for Converge, 1.04. We can see Dito has the lowest debt-to-equity ratio, though we can see their growth is kinda slow compared to the other business, but this is still a check for us. Next, we will look at their free cash flow. Again, free cash flow is cash from operations minus capital expenditures. With this, we can see they have a negative free cash on hand. 
This is because although they have no capital expenditures, which is really shocking for a company, anyway, they still have a negative cash from operations, leading to the negative free cash on hand. With that, this is an X for me. Again, I'm really keen on free cash flow. This is just like saying you have a negative cash on your account right now. What if something happens? It's not always rainbows and butterflies when running a business. That's why holding a good amount of cash is important for me. With this, our next valuation relies on free cash on hand. Although we can see they have no long-term debt, still, I won't accept this. Even though they don't have a long-term debt, still, they have a negative free cash on hand. This offset that no long-term debt part. So this is still an X for me. Now let's compare how its competitors are doing for this. For Globe, it's 31. PLDT, 29.4. Converge also has a negative free cash on hand. We can see in this sector, they really have a high ratio, especially this pandemic. Though a little improvement on the part of Dito, they would be the first one to have a check for this valuation of ours. But for now, it's an X, same as their other competitors. Now another debt valuation, this is for their short-term obligations, which is the current ratio. So this is a new scenario for us guys. If you watch my other analysis videos, for Dito, since they have a few liabilities, they will have a huge number for this. Current ratio is computed by current assets divided by current liabilities. Now we want this to land between 1 and 2. For Dito, it's 134.11, meaning they have 134.11 peso of current assets for every 1 peso of current liabilities. Now this is great, right? Some of you would say that, but for me, this isn't a check. Now that's why I said it should be at least between 1 and 2. Now too much of a current ratio may mean that the company isn't investing assets well to grow their business. We can see that in their net income, equity growth, free cash flow, it isn't growing well. That's why too high of a current ratio isn't always good. We could have checked this if their net income was growing at a steady rate yearly. But we can see they had negative years. Though their equity grew, it isn't that much of a growth also. With this, it's an X for me. Now let's compare the current ratio of their competitors. For Globe, it's 0.09. PLDT, 0.4. Converge 1.38. We can see most of their competitors are close to that 1 to 2. And 1 is even between this number. So just a reminder for you guys, when you look at ratios, always look at the story behind it. It doesn't mean that it is way over the positive line, that it's a big check. And likewise, it doesn't mean that they fell below what you want, it's already an X. You have to look at what is the story behind it. Just like this one, their current ratio is really high, but we can see they are lagging behind in their net income, equity, and cash flow growth. Now we go look at their PE ratio. So this is really beyond what we want. Their PE ratio is 531.97. Really high. This means if we buy it right now at this price, you are paying 531.97 peso to earn 1 peso. Now let's look at this clearly. Is it worth it to buy at this huge price after all our valuation? Well, you can answer that for yourself. The PE ratio of their competitors are Globe has 13.21, PLDT 12, Converge 43.90. We can see Dito's PE ratio is way off in comparison to its competitors. So this is really an X for us. Next up is their dividends. Well, they haven't paid yet any dividends. I would really be shocked if they would pay out dividends after seeing how they are doing financially. It would really be best if they just invest more in their company. Next is the company's moat. So this will be the hardest part. We can see their financials are way off. So that's definitely not a financial moat. If you look at the meaning of moat, what makes their company sturdy against its competitors? Now this is the telco business. As I mentioned a while ago, as of December 2020, Dito has 2,360 towers compared to PLDT which has 10,079 and Globe with 10,395, still way lower compared to their competitors. So I don't yet have a data about Converge. Sorry, anyway, just by looking at this, I know they are new in this business, but this is also not a mode for me. Let's imagine those towers are soldiers. Now, 2,360 towers won't stand a chance compared to that amount of towers that Globe and PLDT has unless those 2,000 are as strong as the 300 Spartans. I can see that as a moat. Now, for the brand moat, well, not everyone has a Dito SIM and internet. 
Meanwhile, globe and smart is the most used word when it comes to SIM cards and the internet. So this is not yet a brand mode for me. And if you just ask Filipinos, they all know Globe and PLDT. But for Dito, it hasn't yet reached that point. With that, I'm all out of options here, guys. So this is an X for me in the mode. They still don't have that sturdiness to be unshaken by their large competitors. Now, this is for now. The future can still change, but this is too much of a speculation. This is not like ASEN in my last video. The renewable energy were almost close to its competitors. But this one is still too far away to be considered a good enough moat. Now we go forward to their leader. Their CEO is Dennis Uy. For our leader, we look at experience. Now Sir Uy has a lot of businesses like Phoenix Petroleum, To Go Group, and other transport and logistics company in the Philippines. With that, we can see he has a lot of experience. And we can see he is the 22nd richest man in our country. With that, this is a check for us. Lastly, our intrinsic value calculation. So my computed intrinsic value is 2.69. And with a lot of X in my checklist, I decided to put a 50% margin of safety for myself, having a buy below price of 1.34. Right now, Dito's stock price is really high. At the creation of this video, its price is at a whopping 9.90. So this is an X for my list. With that, we conclude our analysis. In my list, Dito scored 3 out of 11. Really low, right? But the thing is, I would still put it in my watch list, although their fundamentals are still way off right now. It may change in the future. I know this stock is hyped, but every investor is different. For me, now is not a good time to buy. But that's for my checklist. Now for other investors, you may see it as since they are still new, their financials would grow in time. I might miss that opportunity when the stock price go higher further. Yes, you can say that. It's really in your judgment. I'm not much of a risk taker in investing. Yes, I may miss the ride when the stock price go higher. It is okay for me. There's still a lot more stock out there anyway. Missing out is normal for investors. You don't have a magic ball to predict the future anyway. But for now, this is my valuation towards Dito. With that, I end my stock analysis video. I hope you guys got a lot from this. So see you in my next videos.